Introduction to ADO.NET VB.NET uses ADO.NET, which is ActiveX Data Object, as its data access and manipulation protocol, which also enables us to work with data on the Internet. Let's take a look at why ADO.NET came into the picture, replacing ADO. ADO.NET is designed to provide a disconnected architecture. This means that applications connect to the database to retrieve a load of data and store it in memory. Then they can disconnect from the database and manipulate the in-memory copy of the data. If the database needs to be updated with changes made to the in-memory copy, a new connection is made and the database is updated. The ADO.NET Components Data access in ADO.NET relies on two components, data sets and data provider. Now let's take a look at this ADO.NET architecture, shall we? First off, data set. The data set is a disconnected in-memory representation of data. It can be considered as a local copy of the relevant portions of the database. Then we have data provider. The data provider is responsible for providing and maintaining the connection to the database. A data provider is a set of related components that work together to provide data in an efficient and performance-driven manner. Data access with ADO.NET. Component classes that make up the data providers. The connection object. The connection object creates the connection to the database. Microsoft Visual Studio.NET provides two types of connection classes. The SQL connection object, which is designed specifically to connect to Microsoft SQL Server 7.0 or later, and the OLEDB connection object, which can provide connections to a wide range of database types, such as Microsoft Access and Oracle. The command object. The command object is represented by two corresponding classes, SQL command and OLEDB command. Command objects are used to execute commands to a database across a data connection. The command objects can be used to execute stored procedures on the database, SQL commands, or return complete tables directly. Command objects provide three methods that are used to execute commands on the database. Execute non-query, which executes commands that have no return values such as insert, update, or delete. Execute Scalar, which returns a single value from a database query. And Execute Reader, this returns a result set by way of a data reader object. The Data Reader Object The Data Reader Object provides a forward-only, read-only, connected stream record set from a database. Unlike other components of the data provider, Data Reader Objects cannot be directly instantiated. Rather, the data reader is returned as a result of the command object's execute reader method. The SQL command.execute reader method returns an SQL data reader object, and the OLEDB command.execute reader method returns an OLEDB data reader object. The data adapter object. The data adapter is the class at the core of ADO.NET's disconnected data access. It is essentially the middleman facilitating all communication between the database and a data set. The data adapter is used either to fill a data table or a data set with data from the database with its fill method. Creating a database in SQL Server Creating the database using Query Analyzer is very easy. Now let's create a database in SQL Server 2005. For that, go to Start and click on All Programs. Click Microsoft SQL Server 2005. Doing that opens up a selection list. Select SQL Server Management Studio. Doing that opens up an SQL Server IDE with Connect to Server window popped up. Here we have filled the three main fields, namely Server Type, Server Name, and Authentication. Fill the required fields and press Connect. Just click the plus symbol of Server Node to expand and view its child nodes. Now click the New Query. It will open a Query Editor window named SQL Query 1.SQL. Query for creating database is Create Database EMP. In this query, the Create Database is a command which is used to create a new database 
and the name of our database is EMP. Click the Pass button to check the status of the command. If the command is right, it will show output as command completed successfully. To execute the statement, press F5 or use the Execute button on the toolbar. Now click the Refresh icon in Object Explorer and expand the database node. This will show our EMP database. Finally, we have created a new database named EMP. Using ADO.NET Classes Let's explore how to implement ADO.NET components through coding. The scenario here is to fetch data from the pubs database in SQL Server and display a list of authors, their book titles, and the prices of their books. Create a new Windows Form application and name it Dataset Sample. Set the following settings to the properties of the form. Set the size to 600 230. Set the start position to center screen. And set text to bound dataset. From the toolbox, locate the data grid view control and drag it onto our form. Set the properties of the data grid view as follows. Set name to GRD author titles. Set anchor to top, bottom, left and right. Set location to 0, 0. Then set size to 592-203. Open the code window for our form and paste these namespaces at the very top of our code. Next, we need to declare the objects necessary to retrieve the data from the database. So paste this code to the form. To add a handler for the form's load event, select Form 1 Events in the first combo box, the General, and then select Load in the second combo box, Declarations. Then paste this code to the Form Load Event. Now run the application by pressing F5. Note that the Data Grid View Control has built-in sorting capabilities. If we click a column header, the data in the grid will be sorted by that column in ascending order. If we click the same column again, the data will be sorted in descending order. Now let's explore how this works. To begin with, we are importing these namespaces. Remember that the system.data namespace is required for the data set and the data view classes, and that the system.data.sql client namespace is required for the SQL connection, SQL data adapter, SQL command, and SQL parameter classes. Then we are declaring the objects that were necessary to retrieve the data from the database. The first object that we declared was an SQL connection object. Remember that this object establishes a connection to our data store, which in this case is SQL Server. The next object that we declared was an SQL data adapter object. This object is used to read data from the database and populate the data set object. The last object in our declaration was the data set object, which serves as the container for our data. Remember that this object stores all data in memory and is not connected to the data store. Our SQL data server object is responsible for retrieving the data from the database. Therefore, we set the select command property of this object. This property is an SQL command object, so the select command has all the properties of an independent SQL command object. This property contains the SQL string or stored procedure to be executed to retrieve our data. Now, after all of the properties are set, we open your connection, fill the data set, and then close the connection again. Then we set some properties of the data grid view to bind our data to it. The first of these properties is the auto generate columns property. Here we let the control create all the columns we need by setting the auto generate columns property to true. The next property is the data source property, which tells the data grid view where to get its data. The data member property selects the table in the data source, and here we set it to authors, which is the table used in our data set object. Then to free up some memory, we clean up the objects that are no longer being used. Connecting to SQL Server with Visual Studio Wizards. In the previous lesson, we've connected to SQL Server through coding. Here in this lesson, we're going to connect to a database in SQL Server by using the Visual Studio Connection Wizards. Right then, start up a new Windows Form project in Visual Studio. Now then, select Data. And in the drop-down window, 
select Show Data Sources menu command, and doing that brings up the Data Source panel. New projects don't include any data sources by default, so click on the Add New Data Source link in the Data Source panel. The Data Source Configuration Wizard guides us through the data source creation process. The first step asks, where will the application get data from? Select Database and click the Next button. The second step asks, which data connection should our application use to connect to the database? We'll have to create a new connection for the library database we designed way back in the previous lessons. So, click the New Connection button. The Add Connection dialog appears to collect the details of the new connection. If the Data Source field contains something other than Microsoft SQL Server, click the Change button to alter the connection type. Back on the Add Connection form, fill in the Server Name field with the name of our SQL Server instance. Configure your authentication settings in the Log On to Server section. Now, I used standard Windows authentication, but it depends on how you set up the database. In the Connect to a Database section, either select or type in Library for the database name. Click the Test Connection button to make sure that it all works. When you're finished, click the OK button to create the new connection. OK, we're back on the Data Source Configuration Wizard form. The connection we just created will look like this. Using a data source. So what is this data source anyway? It's simply a link to some portion of our database, wrapped up in a typical .NET object. Now that it's part of our project, we can use it to access the data in the activity table through our project's code, or by drag and drop. In the Data Sources panel, we'll find that the activity entry is actually a drop-down list. Select Details from the list. Finally, drag and drop the activity entry onto the surface of Form 1. When we let it go, Visual Studio will add a set of controls to the form, plus a few more non-user interface controls just below the form, such as this. By just dragging and dropping, Visual Studio added all the necessary controls and links to turn our form into a turbocharged activity table editor. Finally, run the application by pressing F5. In the running program, we can use the Microsoft Access Style Record Access VCR control to move between the records in the activity table. We can also modify the values of each record, add new records, or delete existing records. Introduction to Link One of the new features in Visual Studio 2008 is Language Integrated Query. At the heart, Link is a simple object relational mapping, or ORM, implantation. Link allows the programmer to quickly design objects that are mapped to SQL relational data and program against them in .NET language. We can get the benefits of full IntelliSense and a structure similar to the one we used while dealing with objects. With Link to SQL, we can query, update, insert, and delete your data. Also, we can call stored procedures. Link to SQL includes the designer for mapping tables, views, and other database objects to the .NET classes called Entity Classes. When we instantiate an Entity Class in our code, it is called an Entity. Microsoft's original motivation behind Link was to address the impedance mismatch between programming languages and database. Link has a great power of querying on any source of data, data source that could be the collection of objects, database, or XML files. Microsoft basically divides Link into three areas, and they are Link to Object, which queries perform against the in-memory data, Link to ADO.NET, and queries performed against the relation database only Microsoft SQL Server supported. And finally, Link to XML, formerly Xlink. These are queries performed against the XML source. Working with Link the scenario here is to populate a data grid view with data from the pubs database with no SQL at all. So, let's get right into it, shall we? Create a new Windows form application called Link to SQL. Next, we have to add a new Link to SQL classes item to the project. Name it pubs.dbml. To add this, right-click the project in Solution Explorer. Choose Add New Items and select Link to SQL Classes under Common Items. 
Next, we have to use the Object Relational Designer to create the entity classes we need. To do this, open Server Explorer and click the icon to connect to a database and complete the Add Connection wizard. In the connection, we can change the server to point to the new server and make other adjustments such as username and password. Change the data source to Microsoft SQL Server, SQL Client, and put in our server name. For database name, enter pubs. Click the Test Connection button to verify our choices. When we get a valid connection, go ahead and click OK. Now, expand the new data connection in Server Explorer and view the tables. Drag the Authors table and the Title Author table to the designer. Now, we'll not use the Title Author table in this Try It Out, but notice the relationship created for us by the designer. Now, save the project. On the form, add a data grid view with the default properties. Increase the width of the form and data grid view so that we can display more fields in the form. Now go to the code behind the Form 1 load sub and paste this code in it. Now, run the application by pressing F5 to see all the authors in California. The output will be something like this. Now let's explore how this application works, shall we? This application shows how amazing Link is to developers. First, we declare a new instance to the pubs data context as pubsdb. pubsdb is now considered an entity. Next, we are declaring an object named authors to hold the results of the query against the authors table. The query is simple, where clause for authors in the state of California, or CA. The third line simply binds the results of the link query to the data grid view. The last four lines were added to allow data updates. Now that was what you call easy. You see, using Link is a simple way to work with our data.